All right, we'll start lying down. So if it's comfortable to be on your back, you can be on your back or any which way you want to be. And if it feels good to move a bit before you settle, you can get some wiggles out and stretch or rock around and just feel your way down to the earth, down to the earth of the planet, the earth of your body, the earth of your bones. I was uh, listening to Tara Brock today, who I love so much, and she said, um, that we really need to replant ourselves in the earth of our body. And so that's what we're gonna do tonight. So take a few more moments here to lie, to come to stillness and to stretch your breath out. See if you can smooth it out and lengthen it without a struggle, without any urgency or intensity, but just allowing there to be a a natural sense of expansion as you place your attention on your breath. Feel your body open out to the sides, to the front, how it presses a little more deeply into the earth as you inhale. And then as you exhale, every cell relaxing, every muscle softening, every joint loosening. And then bring your attention into your brain, bring your mind's eye into what you imagine your brain looks like, all its folds and details. And picture, you know, we've got all these different parts of the brain and in the front of the brain is the part where we have our, it's called the default mode network. And it's um, like your brain, your brain loves patterns and one of its jobs is to create loops and patterns. And like, for example, you get a new job and you drive to work. And on the first day, you're like looking at your map and paying close attention. Uh, by the second week, you kind of know like, oh, when I get to this, you know, tree, I have to turn right here. And then after a year, it's completely on autopilot, right? And this is what our brain does. It creates these maps, these loops. Um, but the thing about that is it happens not just with directions, but with relationships and every which way that we move and live in the world. And so let's think about dropping from the front brain into the back brain. Breathing into the back of your skull, breathing into what you imagine is the place where the back of your brain is. And the back of the brain is all of that sensation. It's a little more primal than the frontal lobe. And so the way to get out of this loop, the way to get out of the default mode, which sometimes is good, but sometimes is not, is to return to sensation, vivid sensation. So as you breathe into the back of your brain, also begin to notice any sensations in your body. Warmth, especially today, there's probably some warmth somewhere. Maybe if you're lucky, there's a little coolness somewhere. Is there a tempo of speed to your body? Can you sense your heart, your heartbeat? Feeling your hands from the inside, your feet from the inside. The whole field of your body is this beautiful vibrating creature of nature. And then we'll take the right leg and pull it in towards the chest. So bring your right leg in, give a little scoop towards your heart and release your hands around it if they fit around the shin or you can always use a, a prop something to strap around your leg if you need to or want to yeah you can move a little bit here if you want to circle your ankle a few times in each direction so that might feel good to flex and point the foot could feel good to curl the toes and then release them could feel good And then here you might want something to hold on to. We'll just see how it goes. The right leg is going to stretch up into the air and you'll hold it anywhere. 
So if you want to grab something to hook around your foot or your leg, you might, or you could hold around the back of the thigh. It's okay if the knee is bent a little bit or even a lot. Do it in a way that really supports your needs in this moment. Yeah, put your cat with your toe is perfect. <laughs> Gold star. <laughs> And then see if, you know, there's definitely some work that's happening with the arms here, holding the leg up. It's probably a little bit of work in the leg to stay buoyant. But let go wherever you can. So definitely around the head, face, skull, throat, chest, rib cage, belly. pelvic bowl, and bottom leg, letting everything that's not the arms and the right leg move downward with ease. I'm not going to hold this one for too long, just another couple of breaths. And then we'll move it into a, a simple twist. You can bend that right knee, catch it with your left hand, bring it over to the left side, and you can modify this, change this however you might like. You might pull a pillow or block under your knee. You might stack up both knees. You might do an eagle leg grab. You might play with just maybe as the leg goes over to the left, that your right arm as it opens out, might even go a little further above the shoulder than normal today. Not a ton, but just maybe an, an inch, half an inch. And you'll find that offers a little more sensation in the shoulder. If that's what you need, take it. If it's not, let that go and keep it soft. Coming back to your senses, vividly feeling the life that's happening right now. At this moment right here is just as important as any other moment. So one of my favorite things to listen to is NPR's Hidden Brain. It's a psychology podcast and it's on, you know, they have it on the, the radio too, if you were lucky to catch it at the right time. But they had um, this psychologist and a neuroscientist, Norman Farr was his name, talking about mental maps. And, um, you know, he was saying how important it is to interrupt them these loops that our brain makes to interrupt them by coming back to our senses. And he gave a really good example. He said with his family, you know, even with your close relationships, if you live with someone or someone you work with, you know, you have these relationships that just kind of go on autopilot. And he said what he does is every morning when he walks into the bathroom, he feels the coolness of the tiles underneath his feet. And that's his reminder not to go on autopilot as he moves into the morning with his family. I thought that was so beautiful that you could pick just a little thing, you know, something simple that you do every morning. That could be your little morning wake up call that reminds you not to go on autopilot, to witness every moment fresh and new. So we're gonna roll onto our front side here. So to let this go, 
Yeah, just kind of roll over onto your front if you want to pillow your hands to rest your forehead on the backs of your hands. You can. You want to make cactus arms, turn your head to one side. You could do that if you need any other movement here. Please take some movement. Otherwise, let everything drop into a deep state of rest just for a few breaths. Can you just drop into a deep, full body rest that nothing is working, nothing is squeezing, nothing is engaged. And then coming into a sphinx pose right here. So slide your elbows back underneath your shoulders. Choose the position of your legs. Do you want them streaming straight back? You could always try little things, you know, like maybe you widen the legs a bit or narrow them a bit. Maybe you bend them, that offers more sensation. Maybe you move your elbows a little this way or that way. There's so many ways to play with this in a, a gentle way to vary the sensation. And then let your spine cascade towards the ground. The legs pour like water out of the hip sockets from the hips to the toes. Empty your legs. Finding Sphinx that can just keep, you know, every few breaths, keep walking through the body with my mind's eye, looking for where I clenched again, because for me anyway, it's a long process of letting go and letting go again and letting go again in this shape. So just keep shedding layers of tension as you breathe. This one go, you can widen your elbows to lower your head down. Again, maybe stacking the palms to rest your head on the back of your hands. A little wobble of your butt, perhaps from side to side, might feel like a nice relief after that. Yeah, if you don't like facing away, <laughs> you can always spin around for sure. We are going to come around eventually. I'm going to do a, a whole series of shapes on the one side and then do the second side in the second half of the class. And so from here, we'll come into a child's pose with the option to add a twist. It's not a huge twist. It's really more of shoulder compression. So into a child's pose with the knees just as wide as you'd like, where you could thread your right arm underneath your left arm. So it's sort of like thread the needle in child's pose, but you're low, you know, your belly stays close to the ground, your hips stay close to the heels. And you let the weight descend through that bottom shoulder. I find if I slide my other arm, the bent arm that's on the ground, the left one here, kind of slide it close to the right 
arm, right forearm, and let it get super heavy. Then I can find just a, a nice amount of twist balanced with relaxation. And once you find your shape, then you gently replant yourself in the earth of your body. Feeling the vividness of this moment, sensation, sound, perhaps scent, taste. Anywhere that's willing to soften a bit more. Maybe it's the brain. Maybe if you feel like you're very in the front of the brain, planning, thinking, managing. Try to move into the back of your brain, feeling, resting. Breathing. So we're going to take the pigeon net. So I invite you as you untwist your arms, if you had one underneath, you might come through all fours and shake that off a bit. You might rest in child's pose with both arms extended for a moment for a little time. Anything goes here. Move or rest as you like. And then we are headed into a right knee forward Pigeon, which you could always do on your back, right ankle crossed over left thigh. So options, options, always gather props if you'd like to use them. There's no hurry to get there at all. But when you do, go ahead and fall over your bent leg. Give your weight to the support underneath you pillow, the block, the earth, give your weight. anything inside that wants to release even a little bit.
coming back to your senses over and over again. Like again and again, and again, put down the impulse to do anything other than like be right here. Interrupt default mode. time we spend here adds sensation, perhaps, noticing that how sensation might change and how one reacts to it. Do I steal against it when it gets intense? Can I make friends with that intensity or is it too much? Being honest, is there any way maybe just to lean into that place of intensity just a little bit, not going over the edge, but just a gentle lean in and softening one more time. And come on back. And my thought was that maybe as you come back, you could walk your hands in and bring your back leg around to come to face in front or you know, however, however, which way we want to come to lay down and right back to where we started again, all the way in the beginning. But yeah, if you want a windshield wiper, if you want to move anything at all, Welcome all the beautiful longings of your bones, tissues. Noticing, like, keep your senses really alive. Is there any part of your body that feels more visible to you right now? Any part that you feel drawn to? And let your curiosity guide you around your whole body, inside and out. And then we'll bring the left knee in towards your chest. Right leg is stretched out on the ground. You can give that leg a little squeeze, a hug, a rock. Yep, circling maybe the ankle, curling the toes, flexing point, whatever you might need to feel free in your ankle, foot. And then we'll stretch the leg up high, which is a famous version of, of Supta Padangustasana, with the hands over the strap or anything you might fashion to wrap around the leg. And then rib cage softens down. Throat relaxes all sides of it. Tongue relaxes. You could even fall off the roof of your mouth as your cheeks soften. And the energy, weight, breath moving from the front of the brain to the back. Back of the skull.
from here into the twist. He bends, the right hand carries it to the right and arrange yourself as you need, as you wish, props or no props. That's it, left arm might fall open out to the left side, perhaps above the shoulder line, but not necessarily. So the Buddhist teacher, Tara Brock, she talks about the same idea, but she doesn't call it default mode network. She refers to it as being in a trance. And I don't know about you all, but I can definitely relate to that. And so if you find yourself in a trance, then you just interrupt it. Interrupt it by coming back to sensation, vivid sensation, the fullness of your sensory experience as it's happening right now. So she elaborates about being in a trance. She says that there's four signs, four sort of red flags that you're in a trance. And one of them, the first one is obsessive thoughts, thoughts that just cycle without a purpose. They're not helping, they're not going anywhere. They just repeat. And you got to be willing to interrupt it. And you'll notice the more you practice interrupting that loop of thoughts, the thoughts that go nowhere, it gets easier and the more space, the more space, the more space you have for Monica. So just noticing as you practice, as you rest, if there's any thought loop or any thought that comes to mind that doesn't really serve a good purpose here, and then just interrupt it by feeling. Feel the weight of your body on the earth, the texture of the breath coming in through the nostrils. Notice the sounds of it.
be a moon, and let go. And interrupt the trance if you need to. Come back, pour yourself into your body. Plant yourself in the earth of your body again and again. Come on to front side like you did before. Take your time, however you get there. And if you want something other than that in this, uh, this release moment in your after pose, go for it. We are eventually coming to a uh, sphinx one more time here. Same, same, revisiting the same shape one more time, but perhaps this time you might vary something. You might bend your knees. You might take a seal, which is the straighter arms, hands a little wider, fingers turned out, arms straighten. That could be an option. Or maybe you just keep it simple. I'm not going to hold it as long this time. Does it feel to do this twice? Does it feel different than the first time? So Four signs that you're in a trance. The first one is obsessive thinking, non-productive, repetitive thoughts. Second one, she says, is judgment. If you notice you're judging anything, judging yourself, judging others, judging how life is unfolding, saying it shouldn't be like this or this shouldn't happen this way, that's a sign that you're in a trance and you're not in your body. Done with Sphinx now. That's it for Sphinx for today. You can lower down, take a rest, wobble a bit, or keep it still as you wish. To perhaps let every muscle loosen from every bone, even just for one exhale, everything lets go. Like a tree that drops all of its leaves at once. Turn this one into a child's pose with the twist, the arm. Thread it underneath. We did right arm under last time, so it'll be the left arm sliding under this time.
So the third red flag is being in default mode network, or being in a trance, is getting caught in our habitual behaviors, our addictive behaviors, the myriad things we use to distract ourselves, work, food, TV, who it might be, and, and the big one, screens. I love this, Tara Brock says, there's only two industries that call their customers users. <laughs> they, you know what they are. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Screens and drugs, same, same. So as much as you can to interrupt, interrupt. Feel your vibrating aliveness. Bring that arm out and rest or move. And it's going to be a pigeon on the left side when you're ready for it. Any way you want to get there, go for it. Any props you want to bring. Moving slowly, slowly. Squeeze your way in. And drop muscle from bones and give your body to the ground every drop of you <clears throat> so the last sign we're in a trance is speed, racing around, racing around, trying to cut things short, that feeling of never having enough time. That's a sign that you are not deeply in your body. Tara Brock. This is all I'm totally stealing the whole talk tonight from Tara Brock. And she says another great thing. She says that when you move half as fast, you notice twice as much. So much of the time we're kind of racing across the surface of our lives, racing across the surface but not really arriving and planting always on the way to something like i said in the very beginning this moment right here matters just as much as any other so plant yourself in it
in with your muscles and your faces of habitual tension. Is there anywhere that's starting to coil up in response to sensation? Let your muscles hang off your bones and feel your soft velvety skin draped over your muscles. few moments. Is there anything anywhere that's willing to let go a little, a little bit more? Releasing, if it feels good to lean off to the left and swing the right leg around, you can do that. Otherwise, anything, anything, maybe you just fall onto your back. Rest or move, we've got some time here. Anything at all could be just a simple seat or lay down, a windshield wiper. We're going to head into our last shape, which will hold a little bit longer. It's going to be a, a dragonfly, a wide leg forward fold today. Um, I tend to really love holding this one a little extra at the end of a practice, but if, uh, if at any point it's too much, of course, you can vary your shape or out and then come back in but gather you up for all the props you might like to have with you as you take a seated wide leg forward bend something under the chest could be nice you could pile up bolsters blocks blankets whatever you've got make a little tower to lay your chest on that's just one idea okay yeah, if you want to sway, wobble, rock a bit to soothe your tissues and to comfort, to soothe your nervous system so that it can convince your muscles to let go of the bones. Let your head go. Let your arms be heavy. Legs be soft, and breath be quiet but deep. on the lookout for the signs of a trance, the signs of default mode network. Repetitive thinking that goes nowhere. Judgment. Just 
distracting behavior, addictive behavior. That one doesn't really happen here because you're, <laughs> you're stuck here. But to remember and speed. I, I love, I think it was Joan Halifax said that we can rush even when we're going slow. And I love that and so feel that. So letting the speed drain from your tissues. It fall out of your pores. Let your bones exhale it out. Another minute here. Maybe we could get just a little bit more comfortable. Sink in a little more deeply. Let the pose saturate you. Follow your breath out, follow the exhale all the way into spaciousness, all the way into quiet. And 
maybe you keep doing that, you keep letting the exhale be long, and slow, and staying really present with it as you move super slowly out of dragonfly and we'll head into Shavasana. So if you need a hug of the knees, a windshield wiper, a rock and roll a bit on your back, do that and then eventually resting. Resting on your back or seated or any way that serves you tonight. Stay and rest or begin to bring yourself back. Having some lightness into the limbs, some effervescence into the bones, but keep it slow. To pay attention, this is our endless and proper work to quote Mary Oliver, to pay attention is our endless and proper work. So perhaps thinking about your feet on the tiles moment, what's something you can do to remember that life is so much more rich when we don't move completely on default mode all the time. Mm. When you come up, you might bring your hands to touch your body, you put them together, watch your heart, no rush at all. The same is out with one arm. Oh. Midsummer, depths of summer, 